Good evening. As we try to recover from the COVID pandemic, it just is such a joy to see you faithful ones show up for worship and gives us hope that um, someday we may get back again to where we were before. Thank you for being here. There are four worship services available each um, weekend this Thursday evening. One, also the online one, and two on Sundays. Um, the indoors one at 8 o'clock and the parking lot service at 9.30. In prayer this evening, we lift up Harold Johnson and family at the passing of his wife, Sandy, who died last Monday, and her service will be held at Schroeder Stark Wayleen tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Memorial for Kevin Lindahl, son of Rita Lindahl, is Sunday at 1 o'clock at the Senior Center here in Boone. The entrance to confirmation milestone will be at 9.30 worship this coming Sunday, and that's followed by the seventh grade confirmation retreat. Now we turn our hearts and our thoughts to God in worship as we open with our greeting. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. And we join together in the prayer of the day. <clears throat> it is found um, at the top of your today's lessons insert. <clears throat> o oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we hear the word of God. The first lesson is Deuteronomy 4. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe 
so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command, command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do, not, they do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. Our second reading is from James verse, chapter 1. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome the meekness, the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unsustained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the seventh chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there also are many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. 
You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I attended Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, we had a tradition of closing every Christmas concert in mid-December each year with a rousing rendition of Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. The choir director who had been there for 40 years had instituted this custom when he first arrived, so it had been done that way for 40 years. At the close of the concert, he would invite up all the alumni from the audience and hand them a score of music, and then he would invite the whole audience to stand and invite anybody who wanted to join in the singing, and oh, it was spine tingling. It raised the rafters. It was such a marvelous way to start out the Christmas season. Well, then that director retired, and a new one was hired. And he had a lot on the ball. He had a lot of gifts, a lot to give. Oh, but in November, before his first December there, he announced that the Hallelujah Chorus would not be sung at the concert that year. You never saw such an uproar. Wow, people were mad. Students, alumni, faculty, friends of the seminary. Some said, we won't buy tickets. Others said, we'll withdraw our financial support. Pretty soon, the Hallelujah Chorus was put back in the program. But the new music director had sort of cooked his goose. He just shouldn't have tackled that particular item. And he was let go before he had even been there one year. Tradition is so powerful. Our revered, beloved traditions help us celebrate our past and our heritage, and they're good in that respect. But sometimes they can squiggle into becoming the way we've always done things, or the only way that we do things. And then that can lead to preventing us from seeing what we need to see or from understanding what we need to understand, from inviting new folks in to give their input and help them share their gifts and their talents. It keeps us from becoming all that God meant us to be. Certainly, this was true of the Pharisees and scribes in our gospel today. They tell Jesus, we follow the tradition of the elders what we today call Talmud and Mishnah, that is Moses' law, sorted into 613 laws from the Old Testament. But then, as if that wasn't enough to try to follow 613, they were constantly added to. They were constantly being interpreted some more. They were constantly being explained some more until there became so many rules and regulations that it's impossible to understand how anyone could keep them all. Part of it was washing before meals, washing hands, washing food, washing pots and pans, and so forth. This was not just some hygienic thing like we do before sitting down to dinner, or as they've taught us in the COVID era, you have to wash 20 seconds in hot soapy water, and that's the time it takes to sing happy birthday twice. No, this was ritual. This was ceremonial hand washing. Extend the hand, fingers separated, wash three times, say a prayer. Extend the other hand, separate the fingers, wash three times, say the prayer. If you do anything wrong, you have to start over. Well, maybe this worked for the Pharisees in scribes who were well off, who had many servants to haul a lot of water for all this washing. But think of the common people. Think of those folks who were raising families and 
who had to go to work every day, they didn't have the water. They didn't have the time. It was overwhelming. Jesus' disciples were part of that group. They're walking along the roadside hungry. They see the wheat fields. They take some heads of wheat, roll them in their, between their hands, eat the wheat seeds, but without washing, without the ceremonial cleansing. That just makes the Pharisees and scribes all of them are sure that Jesus is an upstart preacher, that he doesn't know what he's talking about, that he has a motley crew of disciples who don't observe the tradition of the elders. What's wrong with those guys? Jesus says to them, you have left what was the most important center heart of the law. You have made what you kept, the impossible to keep number of regulations and rules. Jesus is so busy offering forgiveness, healing the sick, feeding the multitudes, helping people understand the gospel, that he doesn't have time either for all that other stuff, the minutia that the Pharisees and scribes want to pile on to people. You are abandoning God's commandment and living by human traditions, he says. Now, the commandment that he's talking about is that commandment that you could recite to me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and your neighbor as yourself. This is the heart and center of the law. If you can love God first and most and serve your neighbor, then you've got the gist of what the law is about. Jesus realizes with the Pharisees and the scribes, it's not just about hand washing, though know, it's a deeper sickness down in the heart, in their inner being, that causes them to be so upset when others don't keep all that multitude of laws. In other words, they have skewed the law in their hearts so that it becomes what they want it to be, rather than what God intended it to be. This is hypocrisy, saying one thing but doing another. In other words, we, they say, keep the law perfectly, and the rest of you, oh my, you're so far behind. We know what God truly wants first and most, but you hardly have a clue. Jesus says, you're missing the point. You're making mountains out of molehills. You need to figure out now that the law is all about loving God and your neighbor. Jesus comes into this world of ours to heal our heart sickness. He comes into this world to make a difference for us in the most effective, powerful way possible. He comes to you and to me and he dares to love, even what is so unlovable. Look at him in his ministry. He loves the outcasts that nobody else wants anything to do with. He loves the people who are tax collectors and sinners. He loves the poor and the hungry. He loves the mentally ill and the demon-possessed. He loves you and me, all of us so much that he goes to the cross, suffers and dies, offers his life for us so that our hearts can be made new and transformed and so that we can have a heart for others. Love others as we love ourselves. Think about, if you've been watching the news lately, all those places where others need us to have a heart for them. Those who are sick with COVID, the Afghani people, many trying to escape the country at the airport, others trying to make themselves face the future under the Taliban, the Haitian people hit again by a severe 7.2 earthquake, their lives reduced to rubble again. The folks in Tennessee with the terrible flooding, 17 inches of rain in 24 hours. The folks in the western states 
with the brush fires. So many need our help, our prayers, our donations, if we can do it, to help them through what they're facing. The traditions that we live by, Jesus warns not only scribes and Pharisees, but us today as well. Test the traditions. Do they help you love God above everything and your neighbor as yourself? Do the traditions that we follow help us keep Christ front and center in our lives? Do they help us to exchange new ideas and be willing to open our hearts to new possibilities? Do they engage new people to offer their gifts and talents? Do they help us become a more vibrant community of faith? Some of you may have seen the film Chocolat. A French woman, Vianne, moves into a very pious, very traditional French village in 1959 and opens up a specialty chocolate shop in the middle of Lent. Oh, the pious church-going people in that town, they're trying to keep themselves in a state of self-denial, in a state of penance. They're not going to go to her chocolate shop. But in the midst of all that they're doing to keep regulations and rules, they have also forgotten the heart of the gospel, how to offer grace to other people, how to practice compassion, how to give of themselves and extend a welcome to others. Vianne, this lady who's moved in, seems to offend their traditions at every turn. She takes into her home a woman who is being abused by her husband. She helps a young girl try to get used to school and find friends. When the people that the townsfolk call river rats, gypsies, come to dock the river, she extends welcome and hospitality to these folks that everyone else considers outcasts. By her love, by her care, what a difference is made in that town. Even when the mayor tries to start a smear campaign and force her out, make her move, she just keeps right on being a Christ figure, loving with Jesus kind of love. Families are reconciled. People find new joy in the gospel. The village is renewed. It comes alive again. Indeed, her name, Vianne, means to come alive. God's heart of love, made known to us in Jesus. Jesus, who heals our hearts, who transforms them, who helps us test our traditions and see whether they still should hold true in our lives. He is going to always be there to help us offer grace, practice compassion, extend a welcome. Amen. Please join with me in confessing our faith in the Apostles' Creed from your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we enter into our prayer time at the close of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Thank you, God, for revealing your great heart of love to us in Jesus, who heals and transforms our hearts so that we can love you first and most and have a heart for our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole creation, that plants and animals and humans may have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Support all those who are trying to recover from storms in Tennessee and those who are trying to recover from the wildfires in the Western states. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in positions of authority, our national and local leaders. Raise up wise and discerning leaders who can have wisdom and compassion in the things that are going on in Afghanistan, in looking out for the Haitians following their earthquake, and in all the other challenges that have to be faced. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for mercy for all experiencing the COVID pandemic and for grace, love, and patience to overcome this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially for all who begin a new school year, the students, teachers, and staff. Empower them, guide students in their learning and development, keep them well and safe, accompany parents, and give them encouragement and love toward their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your healing power for all who are ill. We ask your comfort and consolation for those recently bereaved, especially the family of Sandy Johnson and Kevin Lindahl. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with all our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us. Be upon you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God.